This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on an example of a custom designed simulink function or S function. Um, and in this case, this is a relatively simple function. Um, in a previous video, I had described um, how to start creating your own S function based on this um, provided template in MATLAB. And so, just a brief review this had. Um, a lot of commenting and a lot of description and generality for multiple purposes here. We had all of these different blocks that we could use um, and so um, there were a lot of general capabilities. Now in this video I'm going to go through an example of a simplified version of this that doesn't need all of these functions. So first let me describe um, what we're trying to accomplish. So this is a simple example, um, and we want to create this level 2 S function. Um, the level 2 just meaning that we're going to program in MATLAB. And the application is that we want to convert airspeed components of an aircraft. There's two different ways to express this. One is to express in total airspeed, angle of attack, and side slip angle. So that's the V alpha beta. But the other way to express this is just in um, components of airspeed in the aircraft frame, UVW. And the way to relate these two pieces of information is described by uh, these equations right here. And so um, if you are watching this video out of context of um, aircraft applications, don't worry about the context. Just pretend that you have this set of inputs and this set of outputs and this is the desired relationship. And so rather than piece this together using trigonometric blocks and product blocks and doing it that way, we can create this within a custom designed function to do this calculation for us. And this is um, useful for a few different reasons. One, you can design this for any custom situation that you're going to have, particularly if it's something you need to use um, more than once. Um, and so this is also uh, good for keeping things organized so you don't have unnecessary math operation blocks floating around piecing together a calculation. And so we're going to start by creating that function and then we'll come back to this later but then we want to actually use this in a Simulink model to do a conversion for these given values. So with that in mind let's come back to our MATLAB so remember that we're creating these S functions using a MATLAB script. So when I did this, and this is already pre-worked out, but I started with this template file, did a save as, gave it a new name, and I called this VAB for V alpha beta to UVW. And so just remember that this name here needs to match your file name. And then after that, what I did was um, basically I cut out anything I didn't need. I also trimmed back a fair amount on the commenting just so it was easier to see exactly what we need in order to make this happen for this simple function. So within the main function definition, all we need to do is call the setup block. That's all the main function does. So um, you don't need to worry about changing that. There's a lot of commenting up in here. I just trimmed that out so we could see this. It's, that's all there is to it. Within that setup block, this is where we need to um, perform some initial setup things for our program. And in this case, one thing that we need to change is I need to define this so that I have three input ports coming in. So one for V, one for alpha, one for beta. And then for my outputs, I need one for for UVW. So I need three of each, three coming in, three going out, and so I start by defining those. Um, these were things that were provided in the template. We're not going to worry about changing those. Those are good. I don't need to define any parameters for my block, so th these are those things that when you double click on the block you can change things. Um, this function is always going to be performing the same operation, so we don't need any parameters. Um, I'm going to do this in continuous time, so I don't need to change the sample times. I don't need to change uh, the simulation state. And now here, when we get to the point where we add that whole list of uh, relevant methods, I only am going to need three. So after the setup, we just define whatever else we need, and I only need three. So um, I have these two required ones, and then um, sometimes you need to include this um, set input port sampling mode 
um, situation. And um, when you need this, uh, MATLAB will usually be nice enough to tell you with an error that um, you need to define these input port sampling. But if you need this, um, it's just a general block that you need to include. You don't need to worry about customizing it. So I'll show you that. Um, I'm actually going to show you that first just while we're talking about this. So uh, what we have is just this block. We're pulling in um, this information and you don't even need to worry really about what these things mean. Um, you just want to include this code um, in your custom block. And so the one um, subtlety here is because we have multiple output ports, uh, rather than defining them individually, I did this more general with a for loop so that I could keep this as even if I changed my number of output ports, I would still be looping through and setting these sampling modes properly. And so this um, sampling of those input ports block uh, will take care of you for any situation. So this is something that you can use this example, you can copy this into your code, um, and you should be all set. Um, just while we're down here, just a reminder, the terminate block, it just needs to be there. You don't need any code in it. Um, this is just what happens at the end of the simulation if you need to do any kind of cleanup or any final things at the end. Um, this isn't extremely common, so a lot of times this is just blank. So um, there it is. It has to be there, but it doesn't do anything. So this one doesn't do anything. This one we need to include just so that the simulation will run properly, but we don't need to think about it. We can just use it. Here is where we need to do our thinking for this example. We need to define outputs. And so here is where we're going to program in our calculation. Now, just to be real clear as to what this is doing, um, we have those three input ports. And the way we access that data is we use block. If you remember, the block is just a variable that's basically describing everything that's going on with this block. And then we use the dot because it's a structured variable to access one of the fields. And we want to access the input port field, which has three components. So one, two, three. And those are just in order from top to bottom of the ports of your block. And so just to keep things um, organized well, we're going to order those as V, alpha, beta. So the first input port will be V, second input port will be alpha, and the third beta. And in this case, from that input port, what we want to get out of it is the data. We want to get whatever data is coming in on that input port. And so within here, um, this is MATLAB, so we can just define our own new variables on the fly. So now I have variables V, alpha, beta, and I can use those. So when I go to define my outputs, all I need to do is use these variables in a calculation. And so I have my first output port, so a similar format to the inputs. I have block dot output port of, and then this first, second, and third output ports. And in here, instead of getting the data from that output port, I want to give data to that output port. So I'm assigning a value into the data field of that output port. And I do that from, um, this is just our calculation um, from our example. So I'll pull this back up just so you can see as a reminder. I'm programming these calculations. So my first output port is going to be U, the second will be lowercase v, and the third will be W, and it's just obtained from this relationship of our inputs. And so you can see that calculation reflected here. And that's all we need for this program. We pulled in the data that we needed, we performed our calculation, we assigned it to the outputs, and we're done. So that is all that we needed to do in this simple example. Now, just to point out, one thing that we don't have is we don't have any continuous or discrete time states, and we don't have any memory. All we have here is we have data coming in, perform a calculation, send it out. When we go to the next time, we don't have any of that prior information. All we know is what's coming in from the inputs at each new time step. So there's no memory in this. This is just a straightforward calculation. So we will uh, revisit that in the future. But for now, simple calculation really just needs to be defined in the outputs block. Now, once this is defined, we save this file. Now we are able to use this. So if we go into Simulink, which if you don't already have it open, you just type Simulink into the command window and it will pop up. And that will bring up this Simulink library browser. And up here on the left is where we can create a new model, which is where we can put um, our blocks. And so 
uh, in here in the library there is a item user defined functions and this has um, some different options in here uh, but the one that we're going to use is our level 2 MATLAB S function that's what we had created and so this block is going to allow us to use our custom function so we drop this in first but it, right now it's not doing the right thing we just have one input one output this is some default so we need to double click on this and set it to the right name um, and so the name for my function was VAB to UVW and then if we apply that as soon as I click apply you can see things have changed here um, I now have three input ports three output ports it changed the name in there and so this is now our user defined S function um, if we wanted to uh, since we've got those input ports they look a little bit crowded to me so maybe I wanted to expand this out um, bigger so we can really see what's going on and so this is going to do that calculation but we need to define also the input and output ports here so uh, let me just go back briefly to this statement one more time and so for this what we wanted to do is and it doesn't have to just be for a constants but for this example we're just going to consider a constant velocity of 10 constant angle of attack 0.1 radians and a constant side slip angle of 0 radians and do this conversion to UVW so uh, 10.1 and 0 need to come in on these ports and how we can do this is well we look under sources if we're trying to get a input source and there's a constant block so we can bring in this constant block and double click on that to change the value so we can give this 10 this will be our V so if we wanted to even we can change the name of this block instead of that being constant maybe I want to double click on that and edit that to say V so this will be my velocity and I want to drag that in here to this first input port I like to keep my models clean so I'm going to drag this so that we have a nice straight line for alpha we also need a constant so we can drag in a new block here double click to change the value to our 0.1 radians and I'm going to change this blocks name to say alpha connect that up make that straight and also you, you might not have seen it at first but in order to line these up when I get close you'll see these nice blue lines tell me when I'm in line and that's also a nice thing to do to keep things neat pull in my last constant block double click change that value to zero this is my beta so I'm gonna double click the text to change the name of this block to beta connect it line it up and so now we have our inputs coming in now we didn't really express it in the problem statement but in order to look at the outputs of this function um, a lot of times well we'll pull from the sync sinks block here a lot of times we like to use scopes to see what's going on so I'm gonna pull out a scope uh, one trick um, I don't believe I've mentioned this yet if you right click on a block and drag you can copy right click drag so if I wanted to drop three scopes I can do that reasonably quickly click and drag to connect these up line that up so notice also that when you copy blocks like that it's just going to give them each a new name so it just uses numbers so you add a scope now you've got scope one scope two and it'll just keep counting up but again I'd rather say what these things are so I'm going to change that to U V and W and so now these are going to be the names of those blocks but now it's really going to tell me when I look at these uh, what I'm actually seeing so uh, let's go ahead and run this simulation um, it is complete and now we can look at if we double click on the U block well I'm not seeing anything in my window but maybe I need to auto scale and now I'm seeing something so it looks like I have a value a little bit less than 10 um, which should make sense because our total airspeed was 10 but we have some angle of attack on there so that's our U we can leave that open let's pull up V auto scale that well that one's just zero and W scale that that is one so um, this all makes sense the V is zero because we have beta as zero so when you calculate the sine that goes to zero and for our W though because of that angle of attack we do have some component in the uh, aircraft vertical direction so uh, this is uh, just one way to perform this calculation
in Simulink. Um, and so that is a, a reasonably simple example of how to define a custom S function block. Uh, in the future, we will um, include discussion on uh, the use of states and work vectors to include memory within these S functions. So stay tuned. Thank you.